What's up everybody, along with the new hero Baptiste who just went to PTR yesterday, we got a ton, and I mean a ton, of balance changes for Overwatch's existing heroes. Some of these are going to be pretty significant, which is why I wanted to do this video to keep you guys up to date with all these new changes that will eventually be going through to live servers. This is Master Ian Gamer, and let's get into it. So first I want to run through the hero specific changes. And first up I want to focus on the two heroes that I have the most experience with, and first is a move speed buff for Orisa. Fusion driver, movement speed penalty while firing, reduced from 50% to 30%. This means that while she is firing her fusion driver, she can move at the same speed that Brigitte moves while her barrier is up. Now right off the bat, this is clearly a buff, and it sounds like it's going to be pretty good. She's a bit more mobile while being able to fire. Yeah, that's a good thing, right? Well, I don't think in application it's going to end up being that that impactful. You see, Arisa ideally is going to be spending most if not all of her time behind her own barrier, which itself is immobile. Therefore, having this move speed buff won't do a whole lot when it comes to actually like pushing up if you're on attack. So I really only see this coming into play once your barrier's down and you're trying to just dodge enemy fire while firing yourself. In which case, yes, it will make her better. A slight buff, which I think will improve how she plays, but nothing very drastic. Now, now the second change, which I am absolutely excited for, is for Wrecking Ball. Adaptive Shield no longer cancels roll mode. This is huge. As someone who plays a ton of Wrecking Ball, I can tell you this is a pretty significant buff for him. Now, I remember back when Wrecking Ball first released, one of the devs, I can't remember if it was Jeff Goodman or Jeff Kaplan, talked about how they specifically designed Wrecking Ball's adaptive shield to force you out of ball mode in order to essentially reduce its effectiveness. They were worried it would be too strong as you can just stay in your ball where you have the most defense and then get all those additional shields as well. And yeah, I kind of see where they were coming from with that, but I definitely think letting him use it while still in the ball form definitely feels a lot more fluid. You aren't suddenly ripped out of rolling around when you activate it to try to get a bit more defense, and overall it's just going to make playing him probably more enjoyable. And on top of that, it's a pretty substantial buff, which honestly I don't think he even really needed. This is going to be a really interesting one to play out, because I can tell you right off the bat he is quite a bit better because of this change. And I definitely don't think he was a weak hero to begin with, so yeah, I'm really excited to get to play more of him. I have played him a little bit on the PTR already, not a whole lot just yet, but I'm definitely going to be trying him out quite a bit in order to get used to this new change and, well, just see how awesome it's going to end up being. Getting on now to the other hero changes, Ana's nano boost got a nerf. Heal reduced from 300 to 250. Basically, this just makes it less effective at instantly healing tanks when she uses it on them, which I think is a fair nerf. I don't think the tanks really need that extra healing buff, especially at this point with our current meta. So yeah, I think this is a decent nerf all around, not one that's going to have any drastic negative effects. Doomfist. This is what I'm excited for. Rising Uppercut and Seismic Slam. Cooldown reduced on both of them from 7 to 6 seconds. Now, I'm not very good at Doomfist, but I do really enjoy playing him. And I have played him a bit on the PTR with this new buff. And I have to say, he just feels a lot more fluid. After his previous nerfs from a couple patches ago, he definitely was eh, kind of put in a bad spot. They basically nerfed the impact of his abilities, no pun intended. And so I think it's actually a really great idea for them to then go and reduce the cooldowns so that he can use these abilities more often, but they are less impactful than what they were originally. As for whether or not this is going to make him meta or even make him not trash tier, eh, I don't really know. But what they will absolutely do is make him more fluid and fun to play, and I'm going to try to play him a bit more because he's a cool hero, and I definitely am glad to see that he might have a bit more viability now. Hanzo, Sonic Arrow detection radius increased from 7 to 9 meters. This is a pretty simple, straightforward buff. Just makes Sonic Arrow a little bit better, and yeah, not a whole lot to say about that one. Lucio, Sonic Amplifier, Soundwave now counts towards offensive assists. Once again, a really straightforward change. Isn't even technically a buff, because it doesn't actually have any impact in-game. All it does is give the Lucio player recognition for assisting in a kill, so yeah, that's good, but not really impactful. McCree, Fan the Hammer, Damage 
damage reduced from 55 to 50 and dead eye damage per second increased from 275 to 550 after locking onto targets for 2.5 seconds. Now the first change is pretty straightforward, they're just reducing the amount of damage Fan the Hammer does, which is good, I suppose. It was kind of a controversial change which they had made to Fan the Hammer, I guess a couple months ago at this point, but ultimately I don't think it ever really played out as being that devastating. According to the developer comments, they pulled back the damage on Fan the Hammer as a sort of response to the reduction in armor's effectiveness, which makes sense, and overall it's a sort of a shift that has to do with the meta we have currently. As for the Deadeye change, again, this one might not make too much sense at first glance, but according to the developer comments, they state that this was done to make it much more effective the locking onto heroes over 600 health, which, you know, isn't a whole lot of heroes, like, that's bonus health we're talking about, because no hero even has over 600 health themselves, and thus will have a strong effect on things like barriers, or heroes like Wrecking Ball, who has a ton of shields up. An interesting one overall, probably not one that's gonna see that much actual impact in the game itself, but yeah, sure, it seems like a positive change. Next up, May's Endothermic Blaster, primary fire damage increased from 45 to 55 damage per second, and Ice Wall health reduced from 500 to 400. Now once again, this is a pretty subtle buff overall, I'm gonna say. Giving her a bit more damage on the Endothermic Blaster basically just makes it more reliable for her combo. Depending on the target you're focusing, if it's a higher health target like a tank, if you freeze them and Icicle them in the face, that won't necessarily be enough to kill them. Giving her slightly more damage on the Endothermic Blaster's primary fire is gonna make it do a bit more damage over overall, which I guess is intended to make it a bit more deadly. I don't think it's really going to have that big of an impact though, to be honest. Also Ice Wall health reduction 500 to 400, that's really not going to do much once again. I mean, it's pretty rare that you ever actually destroy the wall physically as opposed to just waiting for it to time out. There's not a whole ton of abilities that are really effective at actually tearing it down. Like this is only really going to come into play if you have like a Bastion shooting at it or like a Roadhog ultimate, something that does a ton of damage, it'll thus destroy the wall a bit more quickly, but otherwise I really don't think we're going to actually see this change have much effect in game. Next up, Moira Biotic Grasp heal over time duration increased from 3 to 4 seconds, with the total healing increased from 50 to 65. This is pretty minor, it's a 15 health difference, not going to change a whole lot, just makes her a bit stronger. Again, this is a case where I don't think she necessarily needed this, so it is kind of interesting that they would bother making a change like this. I don't know, once again it's probably not going to have that big of an impact, but we'll have to wait and see I suppose. Next up, Farah Rocket Launcher, minimum explosion damage increased from 16.25 to 20. Yeah, this is again just a very simple straightforward buff, does just a little bit more damage at the very edge of its radius. It's going to make her end up doing a bit more damage overall, but isn't going to change a whole lot. Next up is Soldier 76, and he has some big ones. Pulse Rifle, damage increased from 19 19 to 20, sprint delay before you can fire the weapon after using sprint reduced from 0.5 to 0.3 seconds, and tactical visor can now target rip tire and immortality field. These are pretty big. The damage buff on pulse rifle is actually a reversion from a nerf he had, I don't even know how long ago, quite a while ago at this point, and this is probably just a response to like goats. I mean it's going to do a bit more damage overall, which is going to make it better at just killing targets. It's just flat out a damage damage buff for him. The sprint delay change, again, is going to let him do more damage because he can transition more quickly from sprinting into shooting, so he can start firing just a little bit sooner. And the tactical visor change, I would say, is predominantly a quality of life fix. I mean, it is going to be much more useful now if you're combating a junk rat or the new hero Batiste. Eh, it's not going to be that applicable since it's only going to impact those two heroes. Overall, definitely some good changes for Soldier 76, and I am interested to see what ends up happening with him. Sombra hack. Cooldown is reduced by half when hacking a health pack. Now, this is an interesting change, but one that I am absolutely in favor of. Definitely when it comes to hacking health pack, especially after they removed the ult charge you get from using a hacked health pack, it definitely felt like hacking a health pack wasn't really worth initiating the cooldown, but now that they've done it like this, it's going to make it much more advantageous and efficient to actually have those hacked health health packs, which can do quite a lot when it comes to being able to negate healing for the enemy team. So this could be a rather scary change if you're playing against a really good Sombra who knows when and where to hack health packs, 
and again is one that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on because it could end up having some rather significant effects. Torbjorn, this is another one I'm excited for. Base health increased by 50 armor, so he now has 250 maximum health, with 200 being health and 50 being armor. The exact same as Brigitta. However, to compensate for this overload, armor gain reduced from 150 to 100. So basically, they just took 50 of the armor that he did get during his overload ability and just shifted that to his base health. This was done to give him just a bit more sustain overall and survivability which I do think is pretty good for him because, you know, even with his rework and everything, he's still really not a super good pick in a lot of situations. And so I'm always happy to see Torbjorn get a little bit of a buff because he's a character that he's just had a tough time ever since the launch. And <laughs> I'm always rooting for him to get some sort of good changes that make him much more viable than he's unfortunately been for all these years. So will this make any significant changes? Will Torbjorn become meta now? I doubt it, but at the very least, it's going to help him out a little bit. Widowmaker. Infrasight reveals enemy health bars, but is now cancelled on death. This is an interesting one. According to the developer comments, they did it as a way to actually be able to counter Infrasight, because as it has been currently, once she activates it, it's just there. You basically just have to wait it out. There's nothing you can do to negate it. It just sees all, and there's nothing you can do about it. But now you can actually cancel it by killing the Widowmaker, but in order to compensate for that downside, they've now added the ability to see enemy health bars, which could be rather interesting. I feel like overall this is going to be more of a buff as opposed to a nerf, and yeah, this will be an interesting one to see play out once again. And that does it for all the hero-specific changes. There were also some hero general updates. For example, armor beam type damage is now reduced by 20% when hitting armor, and damage over time effects are no longer mitigated by armor. The dev comments do a pretty good job of summing it up. It's basically just to make armor and its effects more consistent, which, you know, that's fair. Damage boost is now applied when a projectile is fired rather than when it hits a target. Again, just a bit more of a consistency sort of thing. Generally a quality of life change change. Knockback distance is now more consistent. Heroes that are flying can be knocked back and slowed. I am a bit excited by the idea of more consistent knockbacks because maybe that means I can actually do something as Lucio instead of just pushing the freaking Reinhardt two inches when the enemy Lucio, oh he can boop you to outer space, but no my Lucio does nothing. Hopefully it'll solve that issue, but I'm not necessarily going to keep my fingers crossed. And last but not least, some interesting sound changes. A new sound play is when you land a hit while damage boosted, and a new sound plays when you land a hit, but it doesn't do any damage. Now, for those of you who have been playing on the PTR, you've probably noticed this already when it comes to Batiste particularly, with his amplification matrix and also the ability to prevent heroes from dying with his immunity. It's just going to be a pretty important change, I think, to be able to have that feedback of the audio to tell when you're doing more damage and when you're doing nothing. So again, a great quality of life change that I think is going to be really nice to have in game. And that does it for this massive list of changes we have on the PTR. Whew, it took me forever to get through these, but some of them are pretty important and I'm really excited for a number of them. So I definitely wanted to keep you guys all up to date by going through these changes and giving my thoughts about how they're going to end up impacting things. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't seen my videos covering the new hero Batiste where I attempt to play him in game and give my initial gameplay impressions, you can check those out through the card on screen. And otherwise, Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave your thoughts about any of these hero changes or the quality of life changes we've gotten in this patch by leaving a comment down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.